نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا او من كان هي fear of your rub the one who created you from a single soul from that soul he created his mate and through them he spread countless men and women fear allah the one in whose name you demand your rights from one another and be careful about ties of relationship surely allah is watching you very closely <clears throat> dear brothers and sisters in islam the topic of this uh, reminder is hukukul ibad the human rights in islam rights are grouped into two categories uh, number one hukukullah and number two hukukul ibad some people misunderstand that islam is uh, only salat saum zakat and hajj and they think that hukukul ibad are external to deen of islam therefore they think that they can achieve the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just by doing ibadat and not through the service to humanity uh, islam consists of uh, four components it's very important that islam consists of four parts or four departments or four, four components number 1 is aqida or belief number 2 ibadat or worship system of islam number 3 is akhlaq or morals and manners and number 4 very important uh, muamalat transactions or public dealing so those people who have misunderstanding about deen they pick up one department of deen and they consider that this is the whole of the deen the correct approach will be to have a comprehensive concept of deen including all those four compartments <clears throat> and suppose i that uh, uh, aqida and ibadat are very excellent but uh, we neglect the rights of the parents rights of the children rights of the neighbors then we cannot achieve the success similarly if al akhlaq and our dealings are excellent but our aqida is that of a mushrik the one who associate a partner to allah subhanahu wa taala or a person he does not pray uh, no ibadat so that means that uh, uh, he does not practice the deed so without right aqida and prescribed ibadat all consciousness all uh, the courteousness and the good morals and manners will not be of any use before allah subhanahu wa taala so practice the deen in totality with all these four components aqida ibadat akhlaq and muamalat that means that if we are good with our khaliq we should also be good with his makhluq <clears throat> so brothers and sisters hukuk al ibad has got extraordinary importance in deen al islam in hadith qudsi i think uh, you may come across this hadith very often in tazkir in our tarbiya programs that uh, <clears throat> uh, during the day of uh, qiyama allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask o son of adam i was sick you did not visit me o oh, son of adam i was hungry you did not feed me o oh, son of adam i was thirsty you did not give me anything to drink so the person will say oh allah subhanahu wa taala you are rabbul alamin how come that you were sick or you were hungry or thirsty allah subhanahu wa taala will say my such and such slave was sick was hungry was thirsty 
if you had visited him, if you had uh, fed him, and if you, you had given him to drink, certainly you had found me beside him and had achieved my blessing and rahma. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive his own hukukullah, but he may not forgive the hukukul ibad until and unless these hukuk are forgiven by the concerned people whose hukuk have been usurped or infringed. <clears throat> That's why Prophet ﷺ said, if someone has committed anything wrong to anyone, he should ask for forgiveness of that particular person. If he has usurped any right of a brother or fellow being, he should return it or get it written off because tomorrow when he will be standing before Allah Hakimin on the day of judgment, so he will be uh, giving his good amal in exchange of his uh, uh, injustices and excesses that he has incurred against uh, his brother. If your good amal are not enough uh, for the compensation, then the bad amal, bad actions of uh, the concerned parties will be transferred to his deed and he will be a loser. So in Islam, it is not desired that a person is fully devoted and tilted to one side only and neglects the other side. I give you the, the story of one Sahabi. Once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw uh, Abdullah bin Amr ibn al-As, he is the son of the governor of Egypt, and very devoted and pious person. And he saw, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu saw that Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu is coming with pale face and uh, with um, uh, drooping gait. Uh, seeing that he had grown very weak and because of his excessive ibadat and fasting. So Ali Sallallahu Alaihi had got the prior knowledge of uh, the situation of this Sahabi. Uh, and uh, he asked him, what is this? So he told that he is fasting continuously and this and that. And But the Prophet ﷺ was not happy with this situation. He said, That means that your body has a right on you that your body needs a rest, your eyes needs rest and sleep, and your wife needs attention and care. It is enough for you to fast for three days in a month. So it has been explained in a hadith that uh, on the day of judgment, when a person will be presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then his uh, deed register will be open. And the deed register uh, will have three folders or three files in it and first file will be uh, very brief and it will be the just information about his uh, uh, Aqidah that was he committing a shirk or he was uh, practicing Tawheed and if found that this person had committed shirk then no change will be taking place in the deed register and no forgiveness will be given because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna zalik liman yasha so the one who does uh, who commits shirk Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive him and uh, then the second folder is going to open and it is about the hukuk al ibad if hukuk al ibad are uh, good uh, it is good news uh, if record is not good then his good amal will be doled out to those whose rights have been infringed and violated by this person. And then third folder or third file will be open. It will be consisting of hukukullah, uh, weaknesses and uh, lapses, uh, shortcomings in hukukullah will be seen. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may ignore the shortcoming and may not ignore the shortcoming. <clears throat> so uh, very briefly inshallah we will discuss uh, some hukuk uh, and first and foremost is the hukuk of the parents uh, 
الله سبحانه وتعالى says وقضى ربك لا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا that your Lord has ordered you not to worship anyone else except him only and to behave in an excellent manner with your parents. Usually, Ihsana is translated in Urdu or Urdu readers as Ihsan or um, uh, good behavior. But in Arabic, Ihsan is the best of the behaviors, the excellent behavior. So it is the haq of the parents that uh, they should be obeyed in all those permissible areas okay, in line with Quran and Sunnah. They should be physically helped and financially helped. They should be given full respect and regard. They should be loved uh, by heart, not just by lip service. One should behave nicely with the friends of and uh, relatives of the parents. Children should make dua for them always in their lives and after their death is educated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself and children must avoid provoking their displeasure and provoking them to make any dua against them it is called bad dua or dua against them so one companion inquired from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so uh, what is the status of uh, no obedience to uh, parents. So what do you say? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Huma Jannatuk Aw Naruk. Huma Jannatuk Aw Naruk. It means they are either your paradise or they are your hellfire. If you please them, they are your paradise. And if you displease them, they are your hellfire. In other hadith in which the Beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been quoted as saying, if a righteous son looks at the face of his parents with a look of compassion and mercy, he will get reward of an accepted Hajj. The Sahaba were surprised and they asked that, what about if he looks at the parents face for 100 times? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is greatest and glory be to him. So there's no uh, shortage of any ajr or reward uh, before him. Uh, <clears throat> so brothers and sisters, suppose uh, we have mother and uh, father, both. So we have, uh, who has the more rights? The mother has three times more rights than the father, as the hadith says. Among the children, there are fortunate children and also unfortunate children, as I have seen in uh, my masjid when I was imam, uh, that uh, when there is a funeral, there are, uh, mashallah, uh, the children who, who come and who take care of their uh, parents and participate in the ghusl and in the kafan and in janazah. Otherwise, the, I have seen uh, those unfortunate children, they, they just make an appearance at the time of janazah only. So this also kafan, uh, janaza and burial is for the kifaya for all other people, but it is uh, for the end. It is obligation of the children of the deceased to arrange the wassail and janaza and burial of their parents, and also to pay for the dues of the burial arrangements. <clears throat> and uh, next is the rights of husband and wife. So brothers and sisters, the purpose of marriage in Islam is to attain piety, to protect chastity, and to procreate progeny for the continuity of the uh, uh, humanity. Uh, nikah is the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And nikah min sunnat, min sunnati, fama raghib an sunnati, falaisa minni. Wife should be obedient, thankful for the favors, facilities, and comforts. The wife should have appropriate makeup for husband. The makeup should be for the mahram and not for ghair mahram. Makeup should be within the financial resources of the husband or financial resources of herself. She should take care of property and honor of herself in the absence of her husband. And uh, rights of wife. Uh, she has a right of kafala. Fala means that she should be um, taken care of 
or the maintenance, see, and for eating and drinking and for dress and for um, having a house. Uh, <clears throat> that is the maintenance of the family as per financial powers of the husband. Yeah. Reasonable board lodging and clothing. If the husband is in, uh, niggardly, he's, uh, I mean, uh, or tight-fisted, the wife may take money from the pocket of the husband as per genuine needs of the family and not more than the genuine needs. Mahar, good treatment, khula, inheritance, all these are the rights she has. And uh, both of them have the mutual rights, that uh, they should have mutual respect, mutual trust, mutual encouragement, and mutual communication. The cases of uh, physical abuse and domestic abuse are assuming alarming proportions in American society. Uh, such cases uh, cause bad reputation of Islam and Muslims in America. Uh, Ali has called the women as delicate crystals, kawarir. He said, rifkan bil kawarir. So handle them with care. He said, khairukum khairukum li ahlihi wa na khairukum li ahli. The best among you is the one who is best to his wife and I am best among you because I am best to my wife. <clears throat> Rights of children. Children are the beautiful gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they have certain rights. Their mother should be a righteous lady. Since the children cannot choose their mother, so the father should choose the righteous mother for his children. If mothers are good, generations are good, and take vice versa. Good name should be given to children, which has good meaning. Uh, showing good qualities, success, and good luck. Be nice to your children and be friendly with them instead of being a martial law administrator at home. Give them information on halal and haram in America. Provide them Islamic education for a, from an Islamic uh, school. Let them get first five years from the Islamic uh, school. This will, inshallah, strengthen their sound Islamic base throughout their life. Help them in career planning so that they are useful for themselves and for their Muslim uh, community. Hukukul <clears throat> Muslimi. This was uh, this about the uh, some particular hukuk and now I will be talking inshallah hukuk of uh, Muslims. Uh, which are in fact obligation of another Muslim. Hukuk fall in four components. You see, in, uh, I said that, which are uh, the mamulat, the, the fourth one. So uh, these hukuk or wajibat, rights and obligations are fixed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he will hold us responsible uh, for infringing the rights or denying someone his or her rights. Study of the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive his hukuk, but he will not forgive, forgive the hukuk of uh, ibad until and unless concerned parties forgive the violations of uh, their uh, rights. <clears throat> a mountain load, a hadith says that a person will come with a mountain load of amal on the day of judgment and uh, that person uh, will be a bankrupt because of his violation of human rights. He will be cast into the hellfire. If a person fulfills all the requirements of faqida, ibadat, and akhlaq, but uh, he does not uh, fulfill his rights of uh, ibad, the human rights, then he is the loser. So, brothers and sisters, we talk about the hukuk al muslimin on uh, one another, and I sincerely make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to fulfill the hukuk of our fellow Muslim. The, so many hukuk are there, but inshallah, I will be just uh, focusing on few. Help support and protect your brother in face of 
challenges, hardships, and foreign attacks. <clears throat> we are far from behind in this area. We are far behind uh, in this area of support and protection to our brothers and sisters. Uh, whenever we have tsunamis and tornadoes, earthquakes, we are perhaps the last one to reach for help. The other people whom you call non-Muslims are first one to reach. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that you are brethren, you are one single ummah, you are like a strong building. One part of the building strengthens the other part of the uh, building. Al-Mu'minu yashuddu ba'duhu ba'da. Al-Mu'minu kalbunyan, mu'min is just like a, a, a building and one part of the building strengthens and augments the other part of the uh, building. <clears throat> then what is the reason that uh, we do not come out of uh, uh, our, our homes on time to help our brothers and sisters in crisis? Another aspect of he help of a Muslim brother is to stop him from doing zulm or oppression. He said, yet, unsur akhaka zaliman aw mazluma. Help your brother, whether he is an oppressor or uh, whether he is being oppressed. Uh, <clears throat> sahaba, uh, they asked that well, we know that we can uh, help the Muslim, but how we can help the Zalim, the oppressor? The Prophet said that, that you hold his hands, see, firmly, and you stop him from doing any zulm. <clears throat> and you come in between him and his actions so you stop him from doing zulm now if someone is attacking your brother uh, be courageous and hold the hands of the zalim and stop him from doing oppression and protect him so our brothers and sisters are facing zulm in so many parts of the world in palestine uh, in burma in china in india and kashmir and this is our responsibility living here in america that uh, whatever we can do uh, through the um, democratic process uh, we can help them uh, by signing the petition writing the letters and also uh, moving the bills in the senate and the uh, u.s house <clears throat> <clears throat> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that uh, Man radda an irdi akhihi Raddallahu an Raddallahu Wajahu nari Yawm al The one who defends the uh, honor of the Muslim Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will protect his face from the hellfire so there's no room for letting down humiliation, negative campaign, mudslinging, character assassination of a Muslim brother. And even a, a body gesture, body gesture from the movement of the head, or the, um, the eyes, uh, or the face is not loud. لا يحل لمؤمن أن يشير إلى أخيه بنظرة يؤذيه that it is not permissible to look at a Muslim brother with disrespect and insult. And another haq of a Muslim is that uh, to uh, meet him and to talk to him and to behave uh, with him in, with tawadu. Tawadu is humility, humbleness. Inna Allah awha an tawadu. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has instructed me uh, that um, you should be mutawadid, you should be very humble. <clears throat> and he said that man tawada lillahi rafahullah, the one who is humble uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, increase him in grace. And uh, this is another haqq uh, which has very serious implications for the Muslim society. According to this haq, he and she should not cut off his relation with another Muslim for more than three days. 
when they meet and the hadith says that one turns his face to this side and the other turns his face to that side so the bissalam, and the best one among the two is the one who takes the initiative and who says assalamu alaikum and also uh, the muslim reserves the haq that he should not be cheated by another muslim man minna the cheater is not from us from the muslims if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives someone position of leadership over some people, but he cheats them until his death, and that means he continues till the last time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ban his entry into Jannah, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. The Muslim has the right that other Muslims should not make his life miserable by waging negative propaganda against him and his family. This kind of hukuk violation is very common among us that we propagate inauthentic news, fake news against individuals and families. And as a result of this propaganda, the families suffer heavily, especially when they advance proposal for marriages of their children or they want to be a partner in a business. <clears throat> uh, there's a hadith we say that uh, one who provokes negatively someone's wife against him uh, he is as a matter of fact not from us not from the muslim uh, one small uh, sentence can upset the whole relationship like your husband is looking around or looking for someone nowadays <clears throat> and 14th haq is that uh, we know if a Muslim is uh, younger, he will respect the elder, and if he's elder, he will be kind to younger. <clears throat> now, finally, because I see the time is short, and this I will be just uh, concluding it, inshallah. Ali Salatu Wasalam said that Man Satara Muslim, Man Satara Hullah Yom Al Qiyamah, the one who uh, keeps up the secrets of uh, the Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep his secret. And conversely speaking, the one who reveals the secret, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal his secrets. And uh, uh, a Muslim uh, haq is also that you recommend your brother with proper recommendation. Supposedly, he needs uh, marriage and you can recommend him or he wants to enter into a business or uh, he wants uh, some job so if you think that this brother is best suited for the job recommend him uh, with generosity with the good words alayhi salatu wasalam said ishfau tujaru you recommend and you will get the reward inshallah and uh, this was uh, <clears throat> all my submissions uh, with respect to mutual rights of the believers people of iman and uh, <clears throat> but with respect to humanity all human beings are brethren all of them have got equal rights and human rights in islam stem from two foundation uh, which are dignity and equality dignity is a fundamental right of every human being merely by virtue of his or uh, is being humanity as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran that walakad karramna bani adam wa hamallahum fil barri wal bahr we have honored the children of adam and carried them by land and sea regarding equality Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly declared uh, that his sight the only distinguishing factors between humans are righteousness or taqwa. People, we have created you all from a single man and a single woman and made you into races and tribes so that you should recognize one another. So the diversity of humanity into many races and ethnicities is a testament uh, to God's majesty and wisdom. 
Therefore, racial superiority and discrimination is prohibited in Islam and contradicts its essence. The concept is exemplified in the final sermon of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, what he said, La fadla li arabiyyan ala ajami, wala li ajamiyyan ala arabi, wala li abyaz ala al-aswad, wala li aswad ala al-abyad, kullukum min adam, wa adama min turah. What does it mean? That no Arab has got any superiority over a non-Arab. Arabs at their time, they were the rulers. So uh, the Prophet ﷺ addressed them first. Nor does a non-Arab have any superiority over an Arab. Uh, nor does a white man has any uh, superiority of supremacy over a black man. Are the black man any superiority over the white man? You are all the children of Adam and Adam was created from clay. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created uh, different nations, different people, different races, and uh, different colors. And But the worship of country, color, race, lineage uh, is from ignorance or jahiliya. Our Prophet وسلم, very clearly said that Ala kullu shay'in min amril jahiliyati tahta qadami maudu All signs, all remnants of ignorance are under my foot. I am glad that my uh, brother uh, Qasim Mazhar will be talking about uh, racism, how to eradicate racism, and uh, his khutbah will be following my khutbah, inshallah, or my tazkir. Uh, and the time is short, and I suffice on that and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us uh, the true sense of uh, following the hukuk al ibad and fulfilling the hukuk al ibad uh, if they are muslim or they are non muslim uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, just give it give us the wisdom and the way uh, in order to implement and enforce our islam and islamic injunction in this part of the world so that we become a role model for other people to follow and this uh, racialism uh, which is in the roots of uh, america and we have seen that uh, one poor fellow our brother in uh, humanity in george floyd was killed in cold blood uh, in minneapolis and these uh, incidents are recurring uh, in occurrence and because we are not fulfilling our responsibilities we and the upholders of truth and justice are not fulfilling our job in this part of the world. Otherwise, such incidents could be uh, curtailed or toned down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand our role uh, and fulfill our role as a Muslim. Ameen. Allahumma rinna al-haqqa haqqan warzukna tiba'a wa rinna al-batila batila wa warzukna jtinaaba. Aqulu kawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sairi al-mu'mineen wa al-mu'minat. Allahu Akbar